And then what we're going to do is we're going to launch fire. And we're doing that by selecting the active shade. Uh, OK, our, our setting. Oh, you know what? OK, <laughs> before we do this, you need to go in. I haven't even touched these render settings yet. Um, this is important because we're setting up artificial lighting or you know light emitters. And by default, there's a light environment with a physical sky and a sun. And that's why we were just getting white there. We want to turn that off. So we're going to say none, no sky type. We don't want a sun. Um, you can also do image-based lighting, um, have a background, reflection, refraction, illumination, all separately, different images or the same images. We're not going to do that because we have these. Not yet, anyway. Um, don't need to worry about perspective view because we have a camera. Simlumens would be for glare. Uh, and I'm just going to turn it off. We don't have any displacement. I'm just going to turn it off anyway. We don't need a motion blur. And the way that Maxwell works when you render is it works on sampling levels. And that basically is how clear the image is, how noiseless. Um, the less noise, the higher the sampling level you're reaching. The more complex the scene, the more noise. So it's a bit of a trade off. Some scenes might look good at a sampling level of 10. Uh, typically, for final stills, you might go up to, to 16. Um, there's also ways to manage noise. I'll show that. Uh, shortly. Um, and you can also set a time limit, basically. So you can say, in this case, either render 30 minutes or render until you hit sampling level 12, whichever happens first. Um, 30 minutes is quite a while for a sampling level 12. We're probably going to be more in the range of four minutes, five minutes, something like that at this resolution. So let's go ahead and leave all that. Defaults. The only thing I did in here is I turned off that environment light, uh, which was giving us white. Oh, we can also do tone mapping. Um, I'm going to leave it at uh, 709, sRGB, HDTV, pretty standard, pretty much what your monitor, LCD monitor is. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that again. So fire voxelizes the scene, brings it in, and immediately we get our feedback on exposure. And there's a bunch of things we could do in here. Um, change our quality level. Since I'm really only interested in exposure information, I can just set it to low if I want so I get the quickest feedback. Um, now, if we were to, uh, I've done other videos you know, showing how fire works, but um, you know, if we move around, whoops, it's all interactive. Um, you know, we can see our light card. There's our window, so on. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and Leave this here. And now I can see, well, my window's a little stronger than I want. My flash is a little weaker than I want. Um, OK, so what we're going to do, I'm going to load up. I think our camera exposure is probably fine. So now we're just going, going to adjust our actual materials. Um, and as we do that, we're going to see the results here in Fire. Uh, you'll notice, because I have the low setting, it, Keeps it pretty blurry, but at least we know where we're blowing out. Um, so let's go ahead and change our intensity. So let's just drop it all the way to one. See what we get. So this is the window. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to turn off our flash umbrella that's over there. Um, and I can do that by just disabling the layer. I could either do it at the top uh, or at the emitter level. Um, Either gets the same result, or I could set intensity to zero. Now, because I copied it, they both have an uh, intensity of five. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now one. It looks too weak. Um, so let's try three. Getting some detail back there compared to what we originally had, uh, and like I was saying, as you can see, the model. Um, it's taken care of most. You know, we haven't really applied a material to this, but we're not that concerned right now with that because um, the bed is basically just all white linen. Uh, though right now it does have the background and the bed have the same material. We'll change that in a minute. So I'm going to stick with three. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off this light and I'm going to go and uh, it's telling me I have no light source. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to turn on the flash and tune that. Now it's getting, you could set a light temperature, you know, with intensities and, and see how this all changes interactively. So I could go in and 
figure out how many watts I want, uh, and figure out what the efficacy is. It's 80%. Uh, maybe I have a thousand watts, so on. You know. Um, but in any case, we're using an HDR. So it's getting its color from that image. You can also adjust that later. But I'm going to bump it up. So let's take it. Oh, no, not that high. Let's try 10. And basically what I want is I want to have it bright enough. Um, I'm not necessarily shooting for the final lighting. I'm more building up light elements. Um, the reason I'm not shooting for final lighting so much, I mean, it's fine to render with your lighting looking exactly how you want it. That's totally fine. Um, but it's good to know where each light blows out. Um, so in the case of our umbrella, you know, 10 is almost, it's, it's really blown out in the corner. Okay, 15 definitely does it. So I'm going to back it up to maybe 8. An intensity of 8. And now I'm going to turn on our other light, or our two windows. Okay. And that blows out here, which actually I will back off. It being the natural light, I do want it to be the strongest light. Um, this looks good. This is fine. I'm just going to do two light setup. Um, all the shadows are pretty much behind, which is what I want. Um, I could also add a light cast on, on the background, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're not going to go crazy with it. Um, okay, so I'm basically done with fire. I mean, the other thing I could have done while in fire is go and pick that camera and change things like the f-stop, change the shutter speed, change whatever I want in here. Um, so, for example, if we had an ISO of 800, what would that look like? You know, obviously it'd be too bright. 100, what would that look like? Um, F-stop also, you know, so F-stop will control our depth of field, or basically how shallow our depth of field is. So if we 3.5 is pretty low, but we know that this lens we're trying to emulate can go as low as 1.4. So if we go to 1.4, just as an example, obviously things blow out, okay, so then we'd want Either our ISO to go down or our shutter speed to go up or do both. I'm going to go to 200. Like that. Okay, we're kind of back to where we were, except now um, we have a very wide opening in our lens. Our f stop number is very low. Um, the result of this, and then let's put up the quality a bit, is it's going to affect what's in focus, essentially. Okay, so, and in fire, we do get, um, actually, let's find a corner so that really can tell. In fire, you do get depth of field uh, in there. It's a little hard to tell until things clean up. I'll give it a minute. Okay, uh, that's cleared up a bit. I don't know how well you can tell at this resolution, but basically, you know, the headboard's out of focus. The corner of the bed is out of focus. What's in focus is this little fold here, and that's about where our target, camera target is. Um, so if we were to, uh, you know, get in close on, on that fold, we'd really see how extreme that depth of field would be, how shallow it would be. Uh, if I go in and I change this up to, say, 16, and I put our ISO way up at 800. Oh, sorry, that's our shutter speed. We don't want to do that. Let's go down to 30. Uh, ISO, 800. And I won't, you know, wait around for that to clean up. But basically, this is already more crisp. The headboard is more in focus. Um, that's all, you know, with Maxwell, the more you know about how a camera, uh, a DSLR, or an SLR, uh, a regular manual camera works, the better off you're going to be uh, because all of that language and terminology is used in the interface. So anyway, we're done. Uh, well, actually, no, we're not quite done because I messed up our exposure. So let's go back to low quality here. And let's get our shot back where we wanted it. Okay, we'll stick with that. And we're underexposing right now. 
So let's bring that f-stop back to, back to something reasonable. Let's stay with 3.5, bring this down to 200, and we are back where we started. Okay, back off the camera a little bit just so we get some more background. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead, bring up the materials, and now I'm going to create um, a different material for the bed. It'll be pretty much the same thing, um, just slightly brighter. So go ahead and make a copy of that. Call this just whoop, bed. And we're going to make that brighter. We're going to go, uh, and actually you never want to go pure white. Same thing with V-Ray, um, just because pure white doesn't really exist um, out in the world. So we're going to keep it white, or you know, bright, but not pure white, because uh, it would it would take much longer to clear up. Okay, and I'm going to take a roughness. Now, basically, roughness. If I made that zero, meaning no roughness at all, and updated this material, you'd see it basically starts to look chromish or you know, super shiny. Um, so I'm just set this to 98. So, not much in the way of specular highlights on it. Um, okay, so I'm going to sign that to just the bed. Fire will update. Okay, so now our linen stands out from the background much better. Um, starts to look a little bit more uh, like just cloth. I'm not going to worry about texturing it. You know, I could load in um, a bump map or a displacement map or whatever. But again, we're just looking at really the flow. So. This is basically as far as I usually go with fire. I use it just for quick, um, you know, down and dirty checking of lights, checking of materials real quick, um, checking of exposure. All that can be done, you know, pretty much real time. So let's go ahead and close that.